I'm working on a 1949 Lambretta Model B engine, and uh, someone had asked me how to disassemble the rear suspension. So I've got all the pieces here and have like a short uh, tutorial. Um, I don't know where this gentleman is in the process, but I'll just start at the beginning. Things of note is the this rear plate, which contains the gear for the final drive, has to come off as a complete unit first. What we have is, there's the old worn piece. What goes in is the bearing enters from the left in the photo. Then this slides through the bearing and everything else is mounted on the right side. So this has to be fully assembled uh, to be installed and it has to come out in one piece. It's not uh, it's not initially intuitive. Um, I've never seen one like that before. So then behind that, we get to the suspension itself. And what we have is several pieces here. We have the sleeve that goes in and has a cutout for the, uh, the spline. Or, I'm sorry, the bevel drive, which comes up through the trans on the inside. This is why there's a hole here and why this has to be removed before that comes out. Um, there's actually a hole on the bottom to help assist with that. Put some heat, uh, have like a hook with a slide hammer and you can gently remove this. Um, one thing that ends up being a lot of trouble is this Spacer ring gets caught on these bearings pretty easy, especially during assembly. Then we have, uh, but before I guess before we can even get to that, we have to remove this bevel. This comes on the drive side. This way, and runs against the gear in the cover. So first, you have to remove. drop something. So first you have to remove this. It's a big brass gear that helps hold this together. It pushes against this onto here. And then once you get behind that, you will find, well, actually you will find this first. There's a retaining clip and the spring the retaining clip goes into here. This goes around the hooks and ends up in this hole. So you take this, you take this off, you take this out, and then you can extract this bearing. What you can also do is, since you can take off that nut and you can push out gently tap out this bearing with some, obviously with some heat. After that, now you're at this point. One thing of note too is this won't turn. There's a locating pin that goes into here that lines up with the case, but you can't see that right now. But this ring will come off. And this, what I did was reinstall this not tight and gently tap this out and it goes from uh, comes out the drive side. After you've removed that this is still going to be difficult to remove. What you've got is two o-rings and two of these uh, spacers. But what happens over time is that there's actually no seal. There's a seal on one side. So you have an O-ring on one side and you have nothing on the other and it just goes against the aluminum. What happens over time is this turns and it wears the aluminum. So initially what you have is this side has a machined lip uh, for the O-ring and a machined lip for this metal piece to sit in. 
Initially, this piece is flat, but over time, it wears and develops a lip also. So when you try to remove this, you've got this piece trapped between two lips. So, I'm assuming this is probably where you're having the most trouble, is you'll have to find a way to push the ring on both sides towards the center, at least one, and maybe you can cock it a little bit and get off, but uh, you have to push them in against the O-ring to be able to get this started. Once you get just a little bit started, it comes off the rest of the way pretty easy, but in the meantime, it's, uh, it's actually held captive and it's very, very difficult to remove. Uh, when I put it back together, I actually put some sealant on one side and, you know, grease on the other when I reinstalled it so that uh, this will not turn. I use the, uh, the motorcycle gray, like the Yama Bond. So this will stay in place. This will, and then the, this will turn against the O-ring and not against the case. So there'll be no further wear. And I really have no idea how they, did, how they thought oil would not leak past the side. That's just steel on aluminum with no seal whatsoever. That's kind of a, it's kind of lost on me. So I guess for anybody else watching this video, there's a couple other interesting things of note. One is that the crankshaft has to be assembled inside the engine. So you put in, uh, I don't have this apart, I'm not going to take it apart for the demonstration, but you put in your seal, your bearings, your spacers, everything, put that in place. Then this slides in. This comes off. This slides into the bearing. And then through this hole, you put the rod over this, and then with some grease, install all the needle bearings. And when you're done, you put this on here. Put in your locating pin to uh, make sure this is straight. It's obviously very difficult to uh, align a crankshaft normally, but put your alignment pin in there. And then you put your bolt through here. See right there, it's a square drive. It's a six millimeter, which is also uh, very close to a quarter inch. These are actually hard to find, uh, hard to find a socket for the, one of these. Uh, it took me quite a while. And at one point I was just gonna uh, buy two cheap quarter inch extensions, uh, cut off the ends and weld them together so I had a quarter inch um, drive on each end so that I could torque these down. Uh, you know, essentially this end cut off the functioning end and weld two of the ratchet ends together. Uh, but I managed to find a six millimeter square drive that would work. Uh, other interesting things of note is uh, normally you have like a points plate and you would turn the points plate to set the timing. This, you turn the entire case. <laughs> Which makes it kind of, uh, uh, it's only good if that gasket in between is, is very good. It's a giant O-ring, but it's uh, not something that I'd prefer to ever disturb once it's on, but here you don't have a choice. Uh, other interesting things of note on a Model B, that most people aren't aware of, the brake lining is riveted to the drum and not bonded to the shoes. So when the when your brakes go bad or uh, when your pads are well, I guess when your friction material is worn, you get a new piece and rivet it in. And then I guess the shoes probably wear out very slowly, or I don't know. It's the first time I've ever seen this in my life, so that's kind of an interesting, unusual feature. Other than that, it has a lot of normal. Things it shares with the D and LD. You get, you know, three pinion drives in the front, two pinion drives in the back, a drive shaft, uh, three speed. But um, probably the most notable thing about the B is the the pivoting rear suspension. Um, also, uh, for the guy, like when you do, the bushings are available, 
and when you get them, you press them in. There's a specific spot where you can see where there's a top and a bottom, and an inside of an out, and that's for the uh, to get the oil in as a groove cut for the oil to circulate through. And uh, once you install those, you have to have it, you have to line bore it uh, or line hone it, whatever tool you have uh, to ever get this back in. This one, this one was super sloppy. Probably can't see it, but there's a, a huge lip where this is worn away. This is considerably smaller than it ever was before. The bike was super unstable. Um, it was really super worn. It's kind of the one of the problems with the design is as soon as it wears a little bit, it leaks, and once it leaks, you lose oil, and then it wears more. So, um, an interesting design, but. Uh, not really good for long term, difficult to rebuild. It's a lot of work. Uh, the shimming is, is pretty difficult also. But there you go. There's a short tour of a Lambretta Model B. When it uh, all goes back together, I'll take some more, I'll take a video and do, and do a little story on it. All right, I hope that helps. If you have any, any questions, you know, uh, leave a comment and I'll answer it.